But first, and this seems a miracle, there are now signs that the heroic Ukrainians could, could actually beat that massive Russian army. The Russians thought their invasion of Ukraine would be all over in a few days. Well, this is now day 12, no sign of victory at all. And yes, a lot more Ukrainians are still going to die fighting for their freedom. But let me show you some of the signs of this possible miracle, the most unlikely victory. The Ukrainians are using shoulder-fired missiles and some jets to knock out whole convoys of Russian armour, and especially trucks carrying crucial supplies, like this convoy of more than 30 trucks and armoured vehicles that were ambushed near the besieged city of Kharkiv in the east of Ukraine. And this is not unusual. Ukrainian soldiers have also destroyed these tanks near Kyiv, for instance. The Ukrainian Defence Ministry claims that last Saturday alone it also shot down nine Russian aircraft, nine in one day, including five planes like this one over Kharkiv and four helicopters like this one, again brought down by a shoulder-fired missile. The footage is from the Ukrainian army and I have not verified it. For the Russians to lose nine aircraft in one day is extraordinary, more than 100 all up so far, and helps to explain why Russia's air force is reluctant to fly over Ukraine and give its land forces air cover. But perhaps the best evidence of Russia's failure so far is this 60 kilometer long Russian convoy to the north of the Ukrainian capital, Kyiv, which has barely moved now for days. Just why is not clear. But there are persuasive reports of Russian forces running out of fuel and food, of driving vehicles that simply haven't been maintained, of getting stuck in the Ukrainian mud, or just having incompetent senior officers who do not know how to plan a massive invasion. And that's even before that convoy got hit by Ukrainian crazy brave soldiers. Here is the chief of Britain's defence staff yesterday talking about this giant Russian convoy right now starting to look like 60 kilometres of scrap metal. So they were, they were held up north of Kyiv and the forces started to become dislocated. Then you've seen the, the failure of Russia with just some basics in terms of the maintenance of its kit and their kit has been failing. And then at the same time, Russia has been attacked by Ukrainian armed forces and then their, their rear echelon, some of their logistics have been attacked. And now you're seeing that whole, well, convoy stuck it continues to be attacked and that is impacting on morale there are stories of the troops in those vehicles uh, they don't want to stay in those vehicles so they're camping out in the forest they're stuck there and russia has got itself into a mess not just with that convoy but in the whole of ukraine and we need to keep applying the pressure on russia and actually this failure is putting immense pressure on russian president vladimir putin and i think it's showing this was Putin's idea to invade Ukraine, and it was his fantasy that Ukrainians would, you know, welcome the Russian invaders as liberators. And the whole thing's a classic failure of a dictator, like, just like Hitler when he decided to invade Russia. Putin doesn't like people telling him he's wrong, and his people get too scared to tell him. In fact, Putin now looks too scared of his top defence people in turn, to, too scared to let them sit anywhere near him. Our chief spy catcher, by the way, has noticed. Paul Simon, Director General of Australia's Secret Intelligence Service, says this emerging trend of personal miscalculation, combined with the loneliness of supreme leadership that Putin seems to prefer, does not augur well for his future. Now, Putin's not stupid. He's obviously heard the jokes about him being too scared to even sit next to his generals now that his war is going so badly. So on the weekend, he arranged to be filmed sitting for the first time in ages in the middle of a group of people, people who could finally trust not to attack him or even kill him. They were a bunch of Aeroflot air hostesses who sat politely while Putin again threatened the West with war if it even tried to ban Russian jets from flying over Ukraine and bombing it. Что нужно сделать бесполетную зону, но любое движение в этом направлении будет нами рассматриваться как and to show the watching Russian public he was still a man's man, Putin told a dirty joke 
about how one of the women there, Masha, had shown him a cockpit and he had fun moving a joystick. But outside that room, Russians aren't laughing. Sanctions are destroying their economy. And dozens of Western companies have now suspended or stopped doing business in and with Russia. Even Visa, MasterCard, American Express, they've all stopped operations there, so the credit cards now don't work. Putin now fears what the Russian public might now do, especially if they know the truth about his war. So he's banned independent media from reporting it, closed down prominent outlets, he's blocked Facebook and broadcast into Russia of BBC World and Radio Free Europe. He's made it a crime to criticise the military. Now, of course, protests were already banned, but police last weekend arrested about 4,000 people who still dared to protest against this war, marching in Moscow and in St. Petersburg. And I tell you, that protest took guts because the Russian police went in again with sticks and fists and boots. Now, Putin would also know that the US and European intelligence on his plans has been amazingly accurate. They have been ahead of him at every step, predicting the very day of the invasion. Suddenly, his crack units are getting wiped out. Who's who tipped off the Ukrainians? It seems that people very senior in Putin's military or intelligence may actually be leaking against him. And Putin, a former KGB spy, would know that too. So he's getting desperate. And he has to crush Ukrainian resistance or he's finished. And that is why the Russian bombardment is now brutal and indiscriminate, killing civilians, destroying even apartment buildings like these in Kiev. And warning, what I'm about to show you next is distressing. I'm not going to show you the bodies of the people, the children, on this video, although I should because you need to know what Putin is doing in the Ukraine. It's like what he did in Chechnya. But I won't spare you the screams from this Russian attack on Ukrainian civilians in Chernihiv, north of Kiev. So yes, the Ukrainians could possibly actually win this war with our proper help. But when I say win, that victory won't come until thousands more Ukrainians are killed. The Ukrainians are fighting a new tyranny. Russia, backed by China, they're fighting for our freedom too. But we, of course, are leaving it to the Ukrainians to do all the dying. And the least we could do in the West is to do everything we now can to help Ukraine win sooner rather than later, to destroy Putin now.